When glucose levels are too high, that excess glucose sticks to proteins, sticks to DNA, sticks to other cellular components, and turns them into crippled molecules called advanced glycation end products. And these accumulate and interfere with normal cell function. So to cope with this problem, uh, brain cells release signaling molecules like cytokines and oxygen-free radicals. Uh, and these are there to deliberately create inflammation. Now, temporary controlled inflammation is actually a good thing. It's the necessary first step in responding to any threat. Uh, you can think of them as you know, ambulances that are rushing to the scene of an emergency. Uh, so we do need inflammation. But the next step after cleaning up that mess is supposed to be healing the damage and returning the system to normal. Unfortunately, however, for people who are eating high sugar foods three, four, five, six times a day, this process never quiets down. So what you have instead of temporary, controlled, regulated inflammation, you have uncontrolled, chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. Now, inflammation and oxidative stress can cause significant imbalances in neurotransmitter levels, including serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, GABA, and glutamate. Levels of glutamate in particular can increase by up to 100 times their usual levels. Now, glutamate is the brain's primary excitatory neurotransmitter. You can think of it as the brain's gas pedal. And unfortunately, sustained high glutamate levels are toxic. Excess glutamate directly damages proteins, lipids, nucleic acids like DNA and RNA, and mitochondria. The blood-brain barrier that protects the brain from risky substances can be compromised too. And the cells of the hippocampus, our brain's learning and memory center, can begin to die off, causing the hippocampus to shrink. Now, high insulin diets can also restrict the brain's access to energy because chronic overexposure to insulin can cause insulin resistance at the blood-brain barrier. No matter how insulin resistant you might be, glucose, sugar, blood sugar can still waltz into the brain, no questions asked. So the higher the blood sugar, the higher the brain sugar, even in people with severe insulin resistance and type two diabetes, even those people do not need to worry about low brain glucose. What people with insulin resistance need to worry about is low brain insulin because insulin resistance makes it increasingly difficult for insulin to cross into the brain. So paradoxically, over time, the higher the blood insulin, the lower the brain insulin. And this is a huge problem because brain cells can't process glucose and turn it into energy without adequate insulin. So in people with insulin resistance, the brain can literally be swimming in a sea of glucose and still be starving to death. Now that dire predicament is called cerebral glucose hypometabolism, sluggish brain glucose processing. This fundamental energy crisis is the driving force behind most cases of late onset Alzheimer's disease. We now know that Alzheimer's disease is preceded by decades of gradually slowing glucose processing in the brain. Studies consistently show that the more insulin resistant you are, the slower your brain glucose processing will be. 